we're going to jump into something called um, vectors. We have talked about this briefly in the past. Do you remember what a vector is? What's the difference between a vector and a scalar? Like, for example, something like time. Right. So when we talk about vectors, we're talking about things that have a direction. For example, a compass, right, that, that has a direction. But it's not just relative to that. Um, think about something like mass or weight. That apple sitting there is like 300 grams. Does this thing have a direction? The apple that's sitting there, does it have a direction? No, it does not, right? Mm -hmm. What about a cat? Okay, no, I, I'm not very good at drawing. I'm going to draw a fish because that's easier. What about a fish that's heading this way? Does it have a direction? Yes. Yeah, it's headed a certain way, right? The apple is just chilling there. It's just sitting there. It doesn't have a direction. What about... Um, now, this is going to be a little bit of a brain puzzle. What about time? Does time have a direction? If you're thinking of a watch, yeah, it does. It goes clockwise, right? Like that. A watch has a direction. What about time in general? What do you think? Does time have a direction? Yes. So it turns out time does not have a direction. Seconds, right? You say it's uh, three seconds. Or like something like here, maybe a better example. How long does it take you to go from this point to this point? How long does it take? Well, it takes three hours, right? That is not a direction constant. That's simply a scalar. Okay. Time doesn't have mm -hmm. a direction. So scalar is something that doesn't have a direction, whereas a vector is something that does. For example, scalar would be distance, which is basically length, the distance from point A to point B. You see, that's a distance. It does not have a direction. Something like time, three, three hours, it takes three hours. The unit would be like seconds or something. It doesn't have a direction. Something like mass, mass just means weight, like kilograms, grams. These guys don't have a direction. What about uh, the, the voltage in your battery? Does that have, have a direction? No. No, right? It's just it's a thing. I mean, if you really want to get into it, um, there is a certain direction when it comes to like current and stuff. Like eventually you'll maybe see something like, like this in your physics class, and there's a bulb here. You'll see that the current goes this way. Voltage does not have a direction. That's a directionless unit. Current does. It goes from the negative to the positive. Um, so all these guys don't have directions. Now let's look at something that does have direction. Distance, this is called displacement. What's the difference between distance and displacement? Look at this. From A to B, let's say the distance is 5 meters. That's a scalar concept. That's simply a number, right? Scalar only has a magnitude. Magnitude means the number attached to it. The distance from A to B is 5 meters. But if you say 5 meters east, that's something called a displacement. The displacement from A to B is 5 meters east, OK? It's a distance with a direction. Cool. Mm -hmm. Another idea is velocity, speed. Let's say five meters per second. This is speed, five meters per second. The, velo uh, the vector equivalent of this is something called velocity, five meters per second east. Okay, something that has a magnitude as well as a direction. That's something that we called a vector. Cool. Uh huh. There's some theory behind it. So what exactly does it do? Let me draw you a grid. Let's say you're at point A, okay? 
uh, let's say this is point B. Let's say the distance is two meters. And let's say the distance here from B to C is one meter, okay? Again, this is going straight up. This is going straight to the left. Do you know what a compass looks like? What's the top mm -hmm. part of a compass? North. What about the west? I mean, I gave it away. The left part is west. The right part is east. Down is south, right? Mm -hmm. What's the distance from A to B? Two meters. What's the displacement from A to B? Two meters north. Exactly. What's the distance from B to C? One meter. Right. Uh, so, yeah, the displacement would be one meter west, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to trick you because that's what I do. What's the distance from A to C? Three meters. That's right. What's the displacement from A to C? Ten point question. Meters north, one meters west. Good try, but no, turns out that's not not it. Displacement. It doesn't care about how you go about from A to C. Okay, displacement only looks at the initial point, this, and then it looks at the final point C. Okay, it doesn't care about the path that you took to get there. That's what distance does. The displacement from A to C, the magnitude is going to be this right here. See that? Uh -huh. That's going to be the number. How do we find that number? This is a right angle triangle. How do you find the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle? Pythagorean theorem. Right. So what's, what's it going to be here? What's the hypotenuse of this triangle? So let's say this is C, A, B, right? C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C would be the square root of A squared plus B squared, yeah? Mm -hmm. A is two, so two squared plus B is one, so one squared. So it's gonna be square root of five. That is going to be, yeah? Your hypotenuse, square root of five. Now, we also need the direction, okay? And for this, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to bear with me. Have you done trig in class? You've done triangles, haven't you? You have, I think mm -hmm. you have. Check this out. This is our triangle, okay? I'm gonna call this theta. This is root five, this is two, this is one. It's a right angled triangle. How do we go about finding that theta, the angle there? Gonna have to use trig. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with Soka Toa. You remember that? Mm -hmm. We're trying to find this angle. We need to find, uh, we need to use two sides. I'm gonna use this, this side, right? One. You can use any two mm -hmm. sides, but I'm going to use this side, which is called the opposite side from that angle. Uh, and then let's use the hypotenuse. Why not? We're going to use this side. Which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine, cosine, or tan? Sine. Sine. So we're going to set this up. Sine theta is equals to what over what? Sine is opposite, right? So opposite is one units. What's the hypotenuse? Root five. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How do you find theta? We know sine theta. When the angle is missing in trig, you gotta do the inverse function, okay? To find theta, this is what you do. You do sine inverse of one over square root of five, like that. So sine inverse, one divided by square root of five, and that gives me, uh, I am in radians. 
which we shouldn't do. Let's not get into that right now. So let me go back to degrees. Divided by root 5, um, that is 27 degrees approximately. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does all this make sense? Uh -huh. It's basically a Soga Toa. It's an application of Soga Toa. And so we know this angle is 27. Okay, now what if I asked you, what's the displacement from A to C? There's going to be two components to it. There's going to be one, the distance component, or not the distance, the magnitude component. And second, it's going to be the angle component, the direction. The displacement from A to C is square root of five units, whatever this is meters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got to specify the direction. Look at this. To go from A to C, we first went north, north, 27 degrees, west. You see, that's how you describe this angle. Because you first go north, and then you go 27 degrees west. And that's going to give you this line here. Okay. This is a right angle triangle. We're looking for the hypotenuse. We are given an angle of 30 degrees. How do we find x? Sine, cosine, or tan? Tan? Tan is not going to work. No, it's not, it's not tan. So we're given opposite, right? which is mm -hmm. one unit relative to 30 degrees that one is the opposite. We're looking for the hypotenuse, right? Mm -hmm. We're given the opposite. We're looking for the hypotenuse. So we're looking for OH. It's going to be sine. Sine 30 is going to be 1 over x, OK? The value for of sine 30, if you plug it in your calculator, is 0 0.5 equals 1 over x. How do you solve for x? Now, this is a linear equation, basically. You multiply by x. Right, so you get 0 0.5 x equals 1. So x is going to be 1 over 0.5, which is 2. OK? So mm -hmm. x is 2 units. Now let's go about describing this vector here, this, this angle. This is your grid, north west, south, east. You have something like this. You see, this is 30. And the question is, how do we describe that angle in terms of compass? There's two ways to go about this. To get here, right? You first go west, yeah? Mm -hmm. You go west, and then you turn 30 degrees north, and there you go. That's how you describe this. See that? Uh -huh. There's another way to describe it. What does it? Uh, what does the angle in a quadrant add up to? Ninety. Ninety. So that means what's this angle here? Sixty. Sixty. So we can describe the same line using the sixty. To use that, we have something like this right now. Sixty. So we want to get here, right? Where do we go first? Northwest, east, or south? North. Yeah. North, 60 degrees, west. There you go. This thing and this thing, they mean the exact same thing. They're both describing this line right here. But the path it takes is different. One of them went left first. The other one went up first. But displacement doesn't care about the path that you take. It only cares about where you start and where you end up. OK? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically the idea. Um, let me see if I can find a 
Okay. Uh, we're going to look at an actual thing here, which is going to hopefully make things a little bit clearer. You see all those arrows? Mm -hmm. Um. State four pairs of equivalent vectors. Equivalent means equal vectors, okay? Equivalent means equal. They have to be going in the same direction and they need to have the same magnitude. I'm gonna give you a couple of them. It's not, it's not terribly difficult. You just look at the graph, basically, that's it. Look at A to B. You see this line going up like that? Mm -hmm. Which other line in this box is the exact same thing as A to B? D to C. Yeah, exactly, D to C. That's one pair. What's B to C equal to? A to D. Yeah, that's another pair. Now, when it comes to diagonal, it's a little bit tricky. I'll give you one of them. You see A to E is going this way, yeah? Mm -hmm. And stops at the midpoint in the, of this diagonal, stops right here. A to E is the exact same thing as E to C. They're equal in length and they're heading the same direction. You see that? Mm -hmm. Would you agree that D to E is the exact same thing as E to B? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. And that's the answer to A. So we're just looking at where we started and when we ended up. The magnitude has to be equal. Magnitude basically just means the length. But more importantly, the direction has to be equal. Part B is a little bit more confusing. But it's, again, it's not bad. Nothing is bad. For part B, there's a little vector trick that you can use, OK? Let's say this vector right here. This vector right here, let's say this is goes from A to B. We can call this vector A, OK? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, we can go from A to B using uh, A, but what if we want to go from B to A? What if we want to flip the direction? Turns out, if you flip the direction, the vector sign flips. That's it. So it'll be negative A. Negative A will bring you from B to A. If A brings you from A to B, negative A will bring you from B to A, okay? Mm -hmm. So for this question, part B, um, state four pairs of opposite vectors. Look at this. B to C is the exact same thing as A to D, but it says opposite, so we gotta flip the direction. B to C is opposite, right? It's negative. Uh, D to A. You agree? Mm -hmm. This thing is the same thing as if you took D to A and you flipped it, right? Let's say this is vector, I don't know, let's use a different letter, K. This is K. That means D to A must be negative K, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is B to C is negative uh, D to A. So if B to C is K, negative d to a we know is negative k and look at that negative signs cancel out k is k okay mm -hmm. name me another one opposite and there's a lot of them here um d to c is opposite of what So D to C, yeah. So we're looking at this guy, correct? Mm -hmm. It's equal to A to B, but then it's also equal to the negative of B to A. Because negative B to A looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. This is negative B to A. It's opposite of D to C. You see that? We're just mm -hmm. flipping it, flipping it upside down or left to right or whatever. D to E is the same thing as E to B, but it's the opposite of B to E. Check this out. D to E is opposite of B E. Do you agree? Uh -huh. Similarly, A to E is the opposite of C to E. 
as one of them is going like northeast, the other one's coming southwest. Northeast is opposite of southwest. Let's look at C. Actually, that's the answer to C. It says where the magnitudes are equal, but the directions are perpendicular. A to E and D to E, they have the exact same magnitudes, but their directions are perpendicular, means they intersect at 90 degrees. Okay? Uh -huh. E to B and E to C, so this guy here going this way and this guy going this way, they have the same magnitude. Magnitude means length, but their directions are opposite. Or not opposite, sorry, perpendicular, 90 degrees, like that. Cool? Mm -hmm. so that's the idea behind uh, vector lines. Though actually the, the more useful property of a vector is this. You can add up multiple vectors. What does that mean? Let's say you have vector A, okay? This guy, let's say, is vector A. And let's say this guy is vector B, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're going to add them up. The final result, vector A plus B, becomes, well, you add them up. You literally take this guy and you put it there. It's just going to be a slightly longer vector A. Let's say this was the original A. We just added a bit of B to it, and that's it. Similarly, as you can imagine, you can subtract them. Vector A minus vector B for this question. Um, so let's say vector A is this, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're trying to subtract vector B, which is this. There's technically no such thing as subtraction in vectors. What we do is vector A minus vector B becomes A plus negative B. So this thing right here, a minus B becomes A plus negative B. Again, negative in vector means you just flip the direction. If this was B, negative B will be going west like that. See that? Mm -hmm. And then you add them up. So again, it's going to be the original vector A, but it's going to be slightly shorter. Cool? Uh -huh. This plus this. What do you expect the graph to look like? Longer. Yeah, exactly. Long, right? What about that? And then let's just subtract this. What do you expect it to look like? Shorter. Yeah, that's it. Easy peasy. Um, another property. And this one is probably gonna be the most important one. This one's um, I'm gonna put a star on this one. Adding straight lines is easy, right? Adding straight line, you just uh, long make it longer, make it shorter. But you're not always going to be, yeah, you. in fact, in real life, you'll probably never encounter something like that. You're always going to encounter lines that are like angled. And adding angled lines is a little bit more difficult. Let's look at this example. Let's say you have this, okay, this vector. And I want to add this vector to it. Let's say this is vector A going east. And let's say vector B is going northeast, OK? Now, you can't just make one longer like that. That's not going to work out because that's not taking into account the direction. What you do in this case is you use a rule. And the rule is called this, tip to tail. Tip to tail. You take the tip of the second vector, OK? Second vector. And that's going to add up to the tail of the first vector. Check this out. A to B, if you add A plus B, what does that look like? The question is what does A plus B look like? You start here, you end up there like that. And there you go. This, this guy right here is A plus B. You add it from tip to tail, okay? I'm gonna show you 20 different examples because this is probably the most important idea here. We have something like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Start here. This is because this is the or origin of our vectors. You start there, you come, and you go all the way to this. And there you go. That's the sum of the vectors. They can also do this like northwest kind of thing, east and north. You start here, the initial point, and then you go all the way there. And you can do this with multiple vectors as well. Let's say you have something weird like zig zig. Let's say there's 20 different vectors, okay? Uh, everything is like going like this, going like that. Doesn't matter. You start here, okay, the initial, 
you look at where you ended up and you just draw a line and there you go. This is a sum of A plus B plus C, whatever, everything. This is the sum of every vector. Cool? Mm -hmm. Let's see if they have any. Okay, we're just gonna do this these questions and we're, we'll see if we need to use that, that triangle or the tip to tail law. Okay, this is very simple. Given the vector AB, draw a vector that is equal to AB, okay? So I'm gonna draw something called CD that's going in the same direction and it has the same length and that's gonna be the answer to A, okay? Mm -hmm. B, opposite to AB, what would that be? Opposite. You just draw it in the opposite direction? Yeah, exactly. So we just draw it opposite. Boom, BA. That's that will be opposite. C, whose magnitude equals AB, but not equal to AB. You see this symbol here? Do you have any idea what this symbol means? No. It's the absolute value symbol. So this is actually a function. Y equals to the absolute value of X. We've done this in the past so briefly, I guess. It looks like a V, very, very similar. In fact, very, very similar to X squared, the quadratic parabola, except this one is pointy. Quadratic is curved, right? Mm -hmm. It has the same exact properties, but this one's uh, pointy. What does it actually do? It always gives you the positive number of a function. Check this out. The absolute value of two, it's already a positive number. It's still gonna be two. The absolute value of five, it's already a positive, it's gonna spit out five. But if you plug a negative number in there, absolute value of negative two, it's gonna uh, spit out positive two. It always gives you the positive number, regardless of the sign. Absolute value of negative one over two is gonna be one over two, okay? Mm -hmm. so that's the absolute value function. C, whose magnitude equals AB, but it's not actually equals to AB. So that means we're looking for a vector, that has the exact same length as AB, okay? That's what this means. Magnitude equals the absolute value of AB means the exact same length. We're not concerned with the direction, we're just concerned with its length, the number, but it is not equal to AB. What do you think that looks like? Same length, but not same direction, right? There's infinite ways to do this, could be this. Let's say this is five units, this is five units, but it's not equal to AB because it's going in the different direction. Mm -hmm. So that's what that question C is saying. D, whose magnitude is twice of AB, and it's also in the same direction. Very, very simple question. You just double the length, and as long as you go in the same direction, you're good. There you go. That's the answer to D. Magnitude is doubled, and it's going in the same direction. What about E? What do you think E looks like? You just cut A to B in half and draw it in the opposite direction. Right, that's it. Probably looks something like this, and there you go. You're done, easy peasy. Been a pretty easy question. For each of the following vectors, describe the opposite vector. Airplane flying north at 400 kilometers per hour. What's the opposite? It's flying south. Yeah, easy. B, going northeast at 70. What's the opposite? Northwest. Ooh, tricky, tricky. No, it's not. Look at this. Northeast means this, right? You want to flip this. Opposite means this way, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you say northwest, then that means you're going here. This and this is not the opposite, it's this. It's gonna be southwest, okay? okay? The opposite of northeast is southwest. What about C, what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of this? Southeast? Yeah, exactly. 
D is going west, the opposite vector must be going east, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to hate this question. But if you understand this, you have vectors down for the most part. I'm going to guide you, obviously. Um, so they've given us a B. So this 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 guy is three centimeters, and a to e this um, the height of a box. This is like a rectangular prism. This is eight, right? That's the setup. That means, as you can mm -hmm. imagine, this is gonna be eight. This is gonna be eight. This is gonna be eight. This is gonna be three. We have no clue what B to C is. That could be anything. We don't know how how um, yeah long that distance is, the length of B to C. Let's see if these are true. It's saying AB is GH. Do you agree? AB is the same thing as G to H, or no? Mm -hmm. That's a yes. If you spit it out, I mean, if you pull it out, A to B is this. G to H is that. Are they equal? They're opposite. They're opposite. They are not equal. So I, the first one, is false. They're equal in length, but they're opposite in direction. So AB is not equal to GH. Second one, the absolute value. So absolute value, basically what this does is it kills off the direction. Okay. It says the absolute value of EA, where's EA? This guy here, EA is equal to the absolute value of c to g, this guy. True or false? True. True, exactly. They're lengthwise, they're the same. They're different in direction, but ii is saying strictly look at the length, so that's true. The third one there, ad. ad is this guy. It's saying that is equals to dc. Is that true? It's a square base prism, actually. So a, uh, that means uh, a, b, and um, this is three. That's also three. All these guys at the bottom, there's three units in magnitude. It's is this? True. It's true, exactly. In terms of the magnitude, they're the exact same square. I didn't see that square base thing. The last one, uh, a, h. A, h is the same thing as b, g. So again, see now this is where the triangle, the tip to tail thing comes into play. How do we get from A to H? To get to A, uh, H, A must first travel through this way, A to E, right? Mm -hmm. And then it must travel this way from E to H. So that means your net vector from A to H is gonna look like this. See that? That is your mm -hmm. A to H. It's saying is A to H the same thing as B to G. How do you get from B to G? You do the same thing. Yeah, you do the same thing. You go up B to F, and then you're going to go from F to G. Then you're going to get this diagonal line here. Are they equal? A, H, yes. and B, G? Yeah, they are equal. They're both diagonal. They're going the same direction. They have the same length. B, calculate the magnitude of B, D. Magnitude just means find the length. Um, should be pretty simple. No, it's not. Of course it's not. Um, so again, I'm going to pull out the base, the ABCD base out. So remember, it's a squared, yeah? It's a square. Mm -hmm. So A, B, C, D. We know A to D is the same thing as A to B because they're both three units. We want to find B to D. How do we do this? We're, we're interested in the length. The hint would be, what's the angle in a square? What's the angle of this corner? 90. 90, right? B to D is which side of the triangle? Now, if you cut this in half, you see it's a, it becomes a triangle. It's the it hypotenuse. So what's the answer here? Use Pythagoras theorem. So 
So square root of 18. Perfect, yeah. B to D square root of 18. B to E. Now, again, they're all going to be triangles. So we know the distance from B to A is 3, right? A, B is 3. Mm -hmm. And we know the distance from A to E is 8. So if you pull that up, B to E looks like, like this. This is B. This is E. We must travel this way, and we must travel this way. It's going to be another 90-degree Pythagoras theorem question, right? Like that? It's going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 3 squared, 64 plus 9 squared of 73, and you're done. Easy peasy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. mm, what about B to H? That one is going to be tricky, I think. We're starting here, right? Mm -hmm. We want to find this distance. So that means our triangle, again, now this one's a little bit tricky. Our triangle is going to look like this. See that? Uh -huh. It's again, it's going to be a hypotenuse question. We know D to H is AE. So that's 8. And B to D, we found this earlier. It was square root of 18. And that's it for this question. For this side, I guess it's easy. It's just going to be 8 squared plus square root of 18 squared. So there's 18. 64 plus 18 squared of 82 is B to H. Cool? Uh-huh. See, understand, understand why we had to use B to D, because there's no other way to turn this into a triangle. Like, you can't say B, C, and H. Like, that would be a triangle, but it would not be a right angle triangle. The only way to turn this into a right angle triangle is like that. And that angle there is 90 degrees. So there's some 3D things happening in this diagram. Okay, not, not concerned about that. Um, now we're going to actually start looking into um, the triangle law that we saw before, tip to tail. And this is going to be a little bit tricky. It's not a big deal, though. So we have two vectors, vector A and vector B, OK? Uh, and the information they've given us is that vector A is three units in magnitude. So let's say this is three. And vector B is two units in magnitude. The length of B is two. And we know the angle between them is 60 degrees, yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's say this is A, okay, this is A. And then our B doesn't matter where we put it because it doesn't specify any quadrant. Let's say this is B and this is two units. And we know the angle between them is 60, OK? Uh -huh. The question is asking us to find the magnitude of A, a plus B. Magnitude just means the length. So we need to find the length of A plus B, OK? Uh, is the answer 5? Or is this a trick question? What do you think? A brainstorm. The answer would be five if you could just like kind of twist the B and add it here, right? Then it would be five. The, the answer to this is no, it's not going to be five because the angles between them are different. So you can't just straight up add them up. You can't just straight up make them longer, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the only way you can add vectors is tip to tail. That's what we did before as well. Like when we're adding this, we just added this to this and then it became tip to tail, tip to tail. Same idea here. It needs to be in a tip to tail fashion. Right now, as, as it is, they're touching tail to tail, yeah? Mm -hmm. Touching tail to tail. The, the good thing about vectors is that we can shift them around. Check this out. And this is the only way to do this. I'm going to take vector B, this vector here. I'm going to move it here so that I can have it in a tip to tail fashion. See that? I've taken this vector B. I've literally shifted it a couple of units to the right. 
the direction is still the same. The magnitude is still the same. It's just the position is different. And you're allowed to move vectors like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why did I do this? Because it's now it's in the right format. It's in the tip to tail format. So that's A, that's B. A plus B is going to be start at the origin, wherever you started. Go all the way to the end like that. And this right here is going to be A plus B. You understand that? Mm -hmm. We had to move it because it was not in a tip to tail fashion format. We're not done yet, though. This question is a little bit trickier. Uh, you're familiar with parallelograms, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we kind of have here, actually. This was our original B. And if you just connect all the dots, we're, we're going to get a parallelogram. And this angle initially was 60. What are the bottom two angles of a parallelogram add up to? They are called supplementary angles. It's kind of like a straight line as well. If this is 60, what do you think this is? Think about a straight line. If this is 60, what is this angle? Same idea. What does the angle in a circle add up to? No? Is the angle 120? Yeah, it's absolutely 120. Because in a straight line, it adds up to 180. Same idea here. Supplementary angles always adds up to 120. So if this is 60, this is 120, yeah? We had this as 60 before. That means this angle here is going to be 120. And that's going to be our setup. Is this angle a right angle triangle? Can we use Soka Toa? No. No, we cannot. 10 points. What do you do if you can't use Soka Toa? And we have done this a while ago. I don't blame you if you don't remember. Soka Toa is strictly only for right angle triangles. If you can't use Soka Toa, you need to use something called either the sine law or the cosine law. Okay? Mm -hmm. well, this one is a cosine law question, but sine law looks something like this. A over sine A equals B over sine B. This you would use. Um, if you knew any two pairs, by pairs, I mean if you knew a side length and its opposite angle. Like over here, we don't know the side length. We know its angle. Down here, we know the side length, but we don't know its angle. Same thing here. This you'd use when you have a side length as well as its opposite angle. Okay. Does that apply to our triangle right now? This does not apply to our triangle because we only have one angle, right? And we don't know the side length. So it's not a sine law question. There's only one thing that it possibly could be, and that's the right answer here. This is something called the cosine law. Okay? Mm -hmm. It works like this. Uh, let's say this is C, angle C. Let's say this is, uh, actually, I can even make that theta. Let's say that's angle theta. This is C. This is A. This is B. Cosine law says this. C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine theta. It's kind of like the Pythagoras theorem, except there's this added chunk at the end. And that's the cosine law. You'd use when you know an angle. Basically, when, it, when the angle is trapped between two sides, this is called side angles uh, side. You know one side, you know angle between them, and you know another side. Side angle side. If you see something like this, you use the cosine law, okay? Mm -hmm. 
once you have the formula, it's just a plug and chug. Uh, we're looking for C. So this guy, so C squared is going to be A is 3 squared plus B is 2 squared minus 3 times 2 times cosine 120. Let me plug this in. 3 squared plus 2 squared minus 3 times 2 times cosine 120. It's 16. So C squared is 16. What is C? 4. 4, right? And there you go. This angle, this side length here, sorry. This is 4. And we know if this is A going this way, and if this is B going this way, then this guy is our A plus B. And that's the answer. A plus B is 4. Got to use multiple ideas here, basically. So a lot of algebra, but it's it's not that bad. The, the tricky new thing is tip to tail. You can only add vectors from the tip of one to the tail of another. And the other idea that parallelogram adds up to 180. Okay, The angles in a mm -hmm. parallelogram are always supplementary. It has to add up to 180. And the final thing, not a right angle triangle, you need to use cosine law three things, all of which we've kind of like done in the past bits and pieces. But here we're kind of like putting it together. That's going to be the whole thing, right? Eventually, we're going to see a difference of squares or some cubes or something. And maybe even we'll see like what's a derivative of something like everything is going to come back. It always comes back in one way or another. Okay, so I didn't do something right here. What? I plugged it in. They got 19. I got 16. Two. Okay, I didn't plug this two in here. It's not a big deal. It's just that I missed a two on the calculator. But that's the cosine law. And that's the tip to tail law that we saw. Brainstorming time. Let's say A is going this way. Let's say B is the exact same thing, okay? It's going this way. Exact same length, but opposite direction. What do you think happens when we add them up? The line disappears. Yeah, it disappears. In other words, zero. It's like this, you have three, and then you add the negative component to it, you get a zero. Same idea with vectors. If you had this vector with this vector, yeah? Mm -hmm. They're the same equal magnitude, different direction, you get a zero vector, and that's the idea. If the magnitude is the same, the direction is different, if you add them up, you would get a zero. So they've given us a bunch of vectors, and they want us to find a minus b plus c, OK? There's no such thing as a minus vector, technically. What you do is you do this a vector plus you flip the b, and you add that with a. Let's do this first. So this is a, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's flip b. b flipped looks like this. You agree? This is negative b, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move it down here because you can only do from tip to tail. So I'm going to just move this guy right there. That's going to be my negative B vector, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add C to this because it says A minus B plus C. So again, same thing as we did before. I'm going to take this C vector and I'm going to move it right here. Tip to tail right there. And it goes up like that. See that? A plus negative B plus C. And then you just do, they want the sum total. You start here, wherever you started, you would draw a line to wherever you ended. And this is going to be your displacement. In other words, this is going to be your sum. Okay? And that's the mm -hmm. answer to this question. This guy right here, this vector represents A minus B plus C. Cool? Uh-huh. Okay, here's another box question. There's no math here. I guess there is some math, but it's it's very simple. The the, the arithmetic is you're just adding two things. 
so they've given us a bunch of things, A, B, and C, uh, and they want us to write these guys in terms of A, B, and C, okay. Let's look at B, C. Um, B is here, right? Mm -hmm. C is here. We're looking for this vector here. What is it in terms of A, vector A, vector B, and vector C? BC is the opposite of OA. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's the same magnitude. It's the same side of the same length. But the direction is different. So if OA is vector A, what would BC be? It's just the opposite, right? How do you, how do you say opposite in vector land? BC? Uh, yeah, BC is is what we're looking for, but we need, it needs to be expressed in terms of A, B, or C. You see these small letter A, B, and C? It needs to be expressed in this. BC is the same thing as opposite OA, right? And we know OA is A, so that means BC must be negative A. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? BC, because they, they want it in terms of the small case letters. GF, or GF? GF is up here. What is this in terms of A, B, and C? Understand this. GF is the exact same thing as DE. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. What's DE the exact same thing as? OA. Yeah, exactly. So OA is A. DE must also be A. GF all, must also be A. There you go. Cool? Mm -hmm. OB. So OB means we start here, and then we want to get all the way to there, right? Mm -hmm. How do you go? How do you go from O to B? OB, you first need to go from O to A. Yeah, this is the tip to tail thing. Uh -huh. To get to AB, you go OA, and then you go AB. OA is given in the question. That's vector A. What is vector AB in terms of AB and C? What is that equal to? It's B. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. So OB, therefore, is vector A plus vector B, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think, what do you think about this topic so far? It's OK. Is it fun? A little. Is this the best thing since sliced bread? No. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next one. D. Um, AC. Where is AC? Okay. So we need to go here. See that? Mm -hmm. How do you go to A to C? It's going to be the sum of two different vectors. What plus what? A, B plus B, C. Perfect. A, B plus B, C. This way and then this way. We know what A, B is, I think. Yeah, A, B is the same as B. What is B, C the same as? BC is similar to OA, right? It's negative A. It's negative, yeah, exactly. So it's going to be B minus A. BG, um, B to G. OK, so we start here. I'm going to go all the way up there, OK, th that way. What is, well, what is it made up of? It's made up of two different things. BF plus FG. Correct. BF plus FG. What's BF? C. Yes. What's FG? Negative A. That's perfect. Negative A. Last question for the day. Yay. OF. Now, OF might take you more than three steps. We're starting here, and we're going all the way on the other end, up there, 
Tell me, what is it made up of? There's multiple ways to get there. You could go to O to B. You could go to O to B, yeah. How do you go from, how do you get to O to B? Break that down. To get to OB, right? We did this before. That's A plus B, or in other words, OA plus AB. This mm -hmm. gets you to OB, and then we need to get to F, so plus BF, right? Like that. So okay. it's a three, three-parter. OA is A, AB is B, and then finally BF is C vector. And there you go. That's the answer to F. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. All right. We're done.